Shut up and sit down. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Rebel Trading Group Podcast, episode 36. Today's date is August 23rd, 2018. It is Thursday, my dudes. Back to back. Rebel Trading Group. Spitfires. When it comes to options, don't 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 tempt us with options because we'll go back to back. We'll do it. We're doing it and we're doing it and we're live. Back to back. My name is Nathan Oliphant, and with me, as always, is the gluten-free Jason Bessing. What is going on, the gluten-free? It is. Jason Bessing. How you doing, bud? I'm good, man. We are live again. We're live, baby. It's uh, Thursday. You know, uh, earlier this morning, I was like, man, let's just keep the ball rolling. Just keep the ball rolling, especially since I'm going out of town. So let's flood them with shit now. Am I right? Am I right? Well, Nathan, we had yeah. another sideways kind of boring day. Dow down, down 80 puts, points. Puts kind of worked out. I was up NASDAQ on my puts down. for the day for my Excuse S&P me. Puts. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Dow Dow down uh, about 80 points, NASDAQ down 10 points, and S&P down about 5 points. The Bitcoin still holding strong. Uh, Where is she? There she is. Bitcoin holding strong at 6,000. Okay, why is it not loading? Sorry, I'm 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 getting an error here. Jesus. Wow, so suspenseful. Hey, there we go. 6,428. There you go. I knew she didn't do anything today. Um, Crypto's still just kind of waiting. But I think literally within the next couple hours, we're going to see some SEC news. Oh, wow. Um, Really? Am I going to hear something about that? I'm pretty sure. I I might have to go to uh, some news. Yeah, I might have to go to like uh, coin, um, market coin or something. Um, yeah, there's news out. So we know that several ETFs have been declined before. And now today, Invesco, who owns PowerShares, the company that owns QQQ, is um, applying for theirs. And we should have news today that if that hasn't changed, that is expected. And they are proposing both a long Bitcoin <laughs> and a short Bitcoin ETF. There we go. I can't spell so very interesting. So we're gonna see if anything comes of that. To be honest, we're gonna see. So when did you hear about this news? Uh, I listened to it um, this morning. It was on uh, Rebel Trading or not Rebel blah, 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 Power Trading Radio. They were talking about um, Bitcoin applied for or I'm sorry, sorry, not Bitcoin. Several other companies. First, we know that. The Winklevoss twins on their Gemini exchange applied for a Bitcoin ETF several weeks ago. That was the first one to kind of take the shit. And then another company called Vanex, um, they own the fund I always plug, GDX, my gold fund. Um, They're also a big fund family, mutual fund family. They applied for theirs. That was the last one to go down. And now it's Invesco. But I really, to be honest, I don't read these reports and I don't know too much about it. I imagine that they're applying under different circumstances every time. Like these people wanted this and that's why it got declined. And these people wanted this and that got declined. So I imagine they're applying in different ways and different management techniques. It's all way above my head if I'm going to be completely honest with you. So I just, I just know that news coming out is going to move it. Remember, we don't want to overthink it. We want to keep it simple. News moves Bitcoin. There we go. End of story. I would love like a Bitcoin card. Uh, Cash App. Yeah. Okay. You ever heard of Cash App? Yeah, I know. They kind of like. I know they fuck with Bitcoin. I don't know. I wouldn't say they use Bitcoin with transactions. I don't know how they would, but. I think it just converts your Bitcoin over. You've heard you've heard of goldmoney.com? I want to be able to use the Bitcoin though. Like I want an account. Well, yeah, not with Bitcoin, but I was going to say that um that's another one. It's kind of the same thing, but it's with um gold instead of Bitcoin. Did, did I talk about that one before? What? <clears throat> gold money? No, I don't think so. Um so uh Peter Schiff, I don't know if he started it or he I know he's a huge investor in it and he uh he talks about it all the time, but there's a company called 
gold money that holds your money in gold in various vaults around the world. There's one in like New Zealand, London, Canada. I think there's one in China, Germany. And every time you swipe your visa, it will deduct that dollar amount of gold out of your vault. So if you had 5,000 in gold and you go spend 20 bucks, they will convert your gold amount and how many ounces you have at that time. And it, it holds your money in gold and the visa swipe automatically transacts everything. And if I'm not mistaken, it actually is a visa. So it holds your money in gold and converts it as you use it. We should start listing the price of gold in commodities. Want, we can start. We can start putting you, that. We can do commodities with Nate. I don't mind doing that. Well, let's make a T-shirt. Commodities with Nate. Commodities with Nate. Commodities. Commodities. Commodities with Nate. Come on, on these knees, we, <laughs> Nate. <laughs> come on, come on, Nate's knees. <laughs> come on, Nate's knees with Nate. <laughs> wow. So uh, we'll do that next session. We'll do that next podcast. Yeah, maybe. Come on, maybe. With Nate. maybe. Yeah, make it a thing. It's gonna be a thing. Let's, Fuck you. It's gonna be a thing. Fuck you. It's gonna be a thing. Put that on a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. It's gonna be a thing. <laughs> People will buy it. Damn. Um, so let's go ahead and keep the ball rolling. Hit me with the market news. All right, not much, not much. <laughs> like, okay, this is the day. This is the day after uh, my market news from yesterday was going. Not much going on. You just told me Alibaba missed earnings. Um, that that's that's that. Place. I read, I read earlier this morning, and I get the CNBC alert apps. I don't actually go through them. I just like I just the like alerts. the news alerts yeah. direct to my phone and. If anyone is interested in something like that, definitely I recommend CNBC. There's a few others. You can email me. I can give you a list. Yahoo Finance. Yahoo Finance. There's dozens that you can subscribe to. Anyway, they sent one saying that Alibaba beat earnings this morning. It, was something, it wasn't much, though. It was just a few pennies over the estimates, and it was expressed in dollars. And then I just got an alert about 30 minutes ago saying that it um, lost money in the wand. Alibaba earnings came in at 804 won per share, missing EPS of 815 won. That's not good. No, but China had to devalue their currency after the tariffs in order to keep products cheap. Take some zeros away? They did. I fucking love it. Don't you? He's in there he's in there for life. He's a fucking he's a dictator now. Yeah. So they devalued their currency. Um, actually, you know, real quick, we talked about, uh, not, we didn't even talk about it. I talked about it. I called into invest talk, our friends at KPP financial, and I'll put their little, I'm going to put their link in the notes now. Um, I highly recommend their podcast. They're great. Very smart guys. Very yes. Anyway, um, I called in, asked about yum China and ticker symbol yum C yum C um, they reported that, or he reported back, Mister Steve, uh, not Steve. It was it was uh, Justin. Yeah, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin, don't you dare. <laughs> uh, reported back that Yum China was actually getting hit heavier than it should because of the devaluation of the yuan. And he said that the business is still very strong, and Chinese business is still very strong, but the stocks are in for a little more turmoil over in China because of that devaluation. Interesting. Okay, so um, this came in today. Uh, Trump, uh, Trump said that the the market would crash if you were impeached. Well, I mean – I want to take a look, and maybe some people can comment or email us at rebeltradinggroup at gmail dot com of how the market reacted during like other like conflicts, like the Reagan impeachment, or not Reagan. I'm sorry, what's his name? Nixon, Ronald Nixon, no, <laughs> Richard Nixon. Um, I wonder how the market reacted during that, or like even like earlier impeachments, or even earlier conflicts. I would like Man, to find a book on stock that market history. The stock market then? I don't even know. When does the stock market start? We need to have like a stock market history episode. Oh, I think I think I brought it. I think I brought it up once. It started at it was some sort of tree, like a sycamore tree. I don't fucking know. It was a big fucking tree over in New York City, kind of near the river, not the river, 
Is that the river? There's a river there. Near the There's water. Rivers near in New York, yes. Okay, yeah. They're okay, in the water. Somewhere near the water. They, these gentlemen would meet underneath this tree and they would trade civil war bonds and railroad bonds. And then once companies started to grow and, you know, public uh, stock became more available, people started bringing that to the table. And it all evolved from that. And apparently, I don't know if this is true, there was a physical wall built around where this these trading village was, these little trading offices and stuff and these meetings areas. Yeah. There was an actual wall around to keep people out, especially the local Native Americans. And that's why it was called Wall Street. And that's how the whole term of – like in order to get into these meetings now you're talking in the 1910s 20s now in order to get into the exchanges you had to know somebody or have a broker this is ta- bro- these are these are taco bells of china what you, what yumsi right is that what you're talking about yeah no i'm talking about the stock market wait no i thought we were going into yumsi before that well, I was going to, but you were talking about the history of the stock market, and I was right. hitting you with it. My bad. I'm sorry. I brought up Yumsy, and I have all the information up. Oh, so you were thinking about <laughs> yeah. it. Oh, I gotcha. So anyway, yeah, so you had to have a broker to get into these exchanges, and that's how brokers started. And now it's still, even today, this huge protected motherfucking thing, monumental, that you got to know people in order to get in. And there's a huge barrier of entry. Not a huge, but there is some. But the guys at the top are killing the guys at the bottom, just like in the good old days. So right, yeah, that was market anyway. news with Nate. <laughs> market and history, market history news with Nate and Jason. <laughs> Thanks for that digression. Anything really China right now is going down with like I'm the, about though. You can buy into it. I like that triple ETF. That's like fu- I bought the triple ETF in January and I texted my friends about it too because I was so excited. And then, like, I sold it, like, after, like, that February crash or, like, February correction, I guess, or sell-off. hmm And it's just fucking gone down since. Yeah, they've been going through one of their biggest bull uh, bear markets in decades. So, it's okay. You gonna you mean to tell me that the Chinese government ain't going to turn that around? That's what I like about it. Buy the fucking corruption, dude. Yeah. Buy it. Yeah. Like, the Chinese government has appointed people to sit on their boards out of every publicly traded company so the government knows every single thing that they're doing and the government buys stock that's gross like their central banks and shit they own holdings in publicly traded companies i guess that's what kind if, of uh what if ours did what if we had no fed it? It? i mean you own your own country you do whatever the fuck you want bro i guess so What's here it is the government cannot own assets yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that in China. Short anything China. But no, 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 no. Don't short it. Everything. Buy it. Buy into the corruption. I hate to say it. Like I know it's a horrible way of thinking, but dude, it's there for your taking. Like I mean, the Chinese government will will put that in reverse. They're going to do everything to come out the winners on this. I promise. I promise you. And I don't blame them. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, let's, let's head over to market terminology. Beep, 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 beep. Let's head over to market terms, bruh. Uh oh. CNBC lit right now. What's Apple hired scores of ex Tesla employees this year and not just for its car project. Dun dun dun. That's breaking from the CNBC. Available now. Um, market terminology, maybe. Uh, I want to keep the ball rolling with technical analysis, something that we haven't kind of mentioned yet about options, that it's a lot more technical-based than it is fundamental-based. It's kind of obvious, though, but once you hear that, you're like, oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. But uh, keeping up with the technical analysis of this, let's talk – tell me what a candlestick pad- candlestick chart is. Okay, so um- – it's a form of like charting, and I've got. If you're looking on the uh, podcast right now, I've got like pictures of it right now, um, and it shows a couple of things. It shows basically if it's if it's green or like it, they have like different colors. Like if they have green and red for bulls and 
and bears, and they have black and white, uh, white being for bulls, black being for bears, correct? Yeah. It's and so what it shows, it shows, um, it shows how much volume. So if like, it's like a thick candlestick, there's like a lot of volume. And then like the tops of like the wicks, they show like what the highest price it was sold at and the lowest price it was, a uh, bought at, or is it vice versa? Lo- no, highest price it was sold at. And lowest price it was bought at. Yeah, it's yeah. the high and low during that time frame. Yeah, it's always in a time frame because with a the average quick glance at a chart, more than likely you're going to look at a line chart. That's going to be the first thing that's displayed on um, your broker or if you go to Yahoo Finance or something. So that line chart just kind of shows you the price movement, but the candlestick chart shows you that price movement during each block of time. Yeah, so you can, with, yeah, you can set your chart uh, when you're doing candlesticks. When you have the candlestick option up on your chart, you can set the option of like what your time frame needs to be, what period it needs to be. Bingo. Most long-term people are going to look probably at the daily month. over I the course the of a year. Sometimes I do, do the, the month. Like the monthly? Yeah, for sure. Well, I like I like to look at the daily on the lo- on a year chart. The daily candlesticks, how they opened and closed that day over the course of each year, or of that of the past year. I'm sorry. So our <laughs> our last term was moving average, simple moving average. Sometimes, mm-hmm. like when when um, GDAX was was lit, I would put the uh, 200 day, and then I think it was what what on the 90 day. I think it was the 200 and the 90 day moving averages on top of the candlesticks. Yeah, so you can you can actually see the moving average against the price Candlestick, movement. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It is cool, and it's it's cool because you start to piece it all together. You first think that you're looking at this crazy chart that's got all these lines and patterns and bands and candlesticks and even different colors all over it. But when you break it down, well, those lines, those are just your moving averages. That's what the price is. That's the average price over the past couple of days. And then the candlestick is how the price moved. And you can see how they work together cohes- as a cohesive, beautiful, money-making unit. So um, do you – now, we primarily use Robinhood. Yeah. Um, so And they do not offer – some brokers might not offer a charting – platform where can we where can you find candlestick charts if someone wants to do some research do a little homework over the night oh in fact if you're viewing now on our live stream i have yum c brought up and they have um you can do like here i've got it on advanced right now but i'll do candle right now and it just shows kind of uh candles and it shows daily candles i guess that's the period uh i can't i don't know Finviz is kind of like kind of weird. If you are you looking at it? Uh, I can only see you. I can't see your screen, but it's cool. Wait, what? I I said I I can see you, but I can't see your screen. What are you looking at? Uh, Skype. Oh yeah, no shit. Well, you said, are you looking at it? No, like, I'm not... are you looking at Twitch or anything? Oh, are no. You looking, are you Googling it? Are you being interactive? No, <laughs> no you're not. No, not at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I was looking at stock Twitch. So, like, the graph, it says daily right here. If you're looking at it right here, it says daily right here on the left. And it's got these candles. And then, like, the time frame, it says daily. I wonder if I change it to weekly, if it'll change, like, the, the kind of the chart. Yeah, see, okay, so these are, like, weekly candles. And now this these dates are from August, June, July, or July, June, uh, May, April, March, February, 2018. Yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of like movement in these weekly charts. So these are daily. These are weekly candles. Now these right here are daily candles, and each one of these blocks are are the days, and it goes back all the way to May. And they're like they're like thirty day candles. So there's like thirty candles between each one. I don't know if you can zoom in on the actual chart. No, the chart's kind of fixed. So if you want to go look at candlesticks, you can go to Finviz. They'll display them and they'll show the volume. If you're looking on our stream, you'll see this big green candlestick um, around 
July, the end of July, and it's green. So that means a bunch of buyers um, happened. There was a bunch of buyers, and there was, look at this, like, really high buy. Someone bought it at, like, really high. And then it went but, back to 38. It went that shows you that violent... It went back to 38. Uh, Sorry, I mean to yeah. me cut you off, no, but that shows you that violent. I, I call it violent. Um, other people say volatile, but that violent move up real quick within that five, ten, one hour, five, ten minute, fifteen minute, one hour time yeah. chart. It shows you that huge spike up. And as traders, you're looking for those lines. That's what you're looking for. You want those movements. Get in, get out. You're looking for those those violent movements during a small period of time. And God, I would love to have some cool. live candlesticks, dude. I would go uh, wild. Like, I've options. heard of people watching minute candlesticks yeah. on Bitcoin. I would love to watch minute, like minute candlesticks on like earnings report stocks coming up next week. Earnings reports. Disgusting. But uh, yeah, in. I think how, how much do I have to, to pay? To wrap it up real quick, I, I just want to point out that one of my favorite aspects of a candlestick chart is it shows you the volume. Yeah. It'll show you the and volume that's on the really bottom as well. That's really important to kind of notice because if you notice, like, you'll know uh, increasing volumes and prices moving up on bigger volumes, that's a pretty bullish sign. If volume is going up, more people are buying it. Vice versa. If volume is increasing and the price is going down, that's not a good sign. And you can put these factors over each other just by listening to you know, these past two episodes. If you have a basic understanding of how stocks move, you can put the moving averages together on these candlestick charts, and you can see the price movement and how it all works. And you say, wow, that's, it's really not all that crazy. It's not all that difficult. It's not all that scary. <coughs> and it gives you a much clearer picture. Oh, my God. Oh my God! The volume yeah. of Bitcoin is just insane in the past like two years. There's just so much. Dude, I heard there were exchanges that couldn't process orders for like four hours, like market orders, just because there was so much volume. That's nice. I like that. All right, so let's go on to our topic of the day. Topic of the day, Nathan. Oh yeah, this is it, options baby. part three. Oh. Let's get it! Spread. Level three options. Welcome to the big leagues, motherfuckers. Nathan's excited. Well, <laughs> the best part of this is, to be honest, I, I I know a little bit. I don't have much to offer on what? this one. Yeah, I can yeah, tell you what I know. Offer. It's, it's yeah, like totally we'll, we'll like see. About we'll probability. See. It's we'll, see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll right. see. But, uh, so... Obviously, if you haven't listened to the the calls and puts episode and you have no idea what we're talking about, go back and listen to those, and then we talk about options. If you're all cut up and you've done your homework and you at least kind of understand the gist of what we're talking about, we're going to talk about spreads, which is putting calls and puts together in order to maximize money on price movements. So, Nathan, tell me how you – like to use spreads or like let's start with some of the basic okay. spread stuff yeah. i'll kind of i'll kind of do it like uh as best as my knowledge goes into it i don't know like because i know there's more i know there's more and i want to like learn more oh there's a lot to it dude yeah. there is, it gets really advanced like credit spreads like i can't help you with credit spreads i'd love to like we should have like an interactive like learning credit spreads like webinar and we'll like i've dabbled I've dabbled. You literally have to watch a few hours of YouTube videos and read a few examples, and All right. it gets to be a lot. Okay, so we'll go. I'll do it from what I believe is like, and I'll rate them like like risk with I, what I think is like how risky they are. All right. What do you mean? You rate the options or the stock? The strategy. The underlier. The strategy. The strategy. The oh, strategy. okay. The strategy. Okay. Yeah. We'll start with. Well, I think also the riskier, the more complex, as well. I suppose. Well, how well, do you want? How do you want me to do this then? Start with like Jesus just the Christ. basic. No, I'm saying, I'm saying like I don't want. <laughs> I, you know, what? I, I want. I trust you. Take the helm. Okay, <laughs> take All the right. helm. 
So, I would say, like, one of the most least risky options, option strategies, ha ha, is the straddle option. Um, so, I feel this is, I feel like what you do here is you're basically grabbing two options at the same strike price, but one of the options is a call, and the op the other option is a put. So, you're basically, um, here, let me see if I can, uh, Robin Hood this up. <laughs> I said I had fifteen hundred at one point. Okay, so if I'm going to UDAO and then I'm going to give me the options chain here, please. If I want the options and I want to buy a straddle option, I want to buy a really an at the money call and then a reciprocal whatever that call is by by that put. And what, what you do there, what you idea, what theoretically what you want to happen is, is you want to drain one of the options to zero. You, you hear what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so. What 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 we so, want is you don't want like it's a you want it to move, you want it to move past your straddle price or your strangle price. But since it's at the money, you can straddle like really anywhere. But straddling at the money is probably the less riskiest option strategy. I feel like, and I, maybe there's 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 different ones. I don't know, less more less risky ones. You know, um, for the most part, as far as spreads go, that's definitely going to be your. I hate to say the word Simplest. safest. Safest, but it's definitely simplest. That's a good yeah. way to start it. So what you want to do, so here's our XYZ $10 example. That's the stock of the week, right? XYZ. Mm -hmm. So um, let's say you don't really know a lot. I'm sorry. We know that there is going to be some serious price movement. Maybe it's in a particular sector. Maybe it's in a particular asset or commodity, or maybe it's just one particular stock. Maybe they're having an earnings report. Maybe they're getting hit specifically with some lawsuits. We just know that there's going to be some volatility, right? Yeah. So we want to capture as much as we can some of that volatility, but there's two ways you can do that. You can try and buy the stock and hope that – or buy or short the stock and hope you go right one way or the other, or you can buy and short the stock at the same time by using a straddle. And the way that you would do that on XYZ stock, let's say CEO uh, felt 16-year-old again. They just they keep doing it, man. They keep doing it. These CEOs, they just go to Brazil and they blow all this money. They do cocaine. And let's say this $10 stock that's already starting to struggle, this guy just got hit with like a two, $20 million lawsuit and the CEO steps down and three boards of the member, members of the board left like – Obviously, if that happens before a market open, we know there's going to be some serious mark, some serious movement. All right, so if you're joining me right. on Twitch right now, I have a UDAO set up right here. UDAO is trading at basically, let's just say, a hundred dollars. It's ninety nine eighty two. Mm -hmm. This is the perfect example, and I showed the example. I I plugged into uh, my brokerage account. This is my Robinhood. I'm allowed to show this, right? Fuck this. I can yeah. show this. Yeah. And Fuck, here, I'll, I'll redo it. I'll redo it right now, and I'll walk everybody through listening to on the podcast right now. So I'm going to go to my options chain for UDAO, and I'm going to go for September 21st. That's the most recent um, option ex expiration date. I'm going to click on my calls. I'm going to go to my 100 calls, so that's at the money. I'm going to 100 call. I'm going to add one. So simple. Then go to the put. It's going to be the same expiration date. Click on the 100, add one 100 put. So I have a $100 call and a $100 put. Okay, so now the premium for the $100 call right now is $3.50. The premium for the $100 put is $3.35. So that total brings it up to $6.90 for the, for the whole straddle. And you can see if you're looking on Twitch, it says straddle right here. It gives you that like option to buy it as a comp, like a package. And one of the advantages to buying it, if you don't use a commission for your broker, is that your broker will charge you one single commission to buy multiple contracts because you're doing a strategy. Yeah. So that's the best way to package it together. And you, you get 
execution at the exact same time rather than buy the call and then hurry up and go real quick and buy the put you can just put it in right together at the same time when you put in a straddle order so basically you want an at the money at the money strike price or very near the money strike price and you want to buy the call and the put and your goal is maybe maybe until expiration but let's just say by the end of the week you want the stock to move you don't want you don't care if it goes to 12 and you don't care if it goes to 0 you just want it to move because one contract is going to cancel out the other so if the 10 call well, so let's say the stock goes down right um, uh, let's go back to udow to make that easier okay. so that 100 that 100 call let's say by the end of the week you think it's going to be at $90 or it's going to be at $90. That call is going to expire worthless. And unfortunately, you lost that $365. Just bam, right off the bat, gone. Boom. You mean the Bye. put? Sorry. Well, the call. Because the uh, the stock ended oh. at 90 Yeah. So, but your put just shot up to 10 What would be $10 there? So that's $1,000. Jesus Christ. That's a lot. The total thing cost you around 665 mm-hmm. something like that, if I'm correct correct so that's a thousand dollars that you got because that premium is now worth 10 bucks at expiration and you get to exercise your contract and the money so you the goal is for one to cancel out the other so what would be your biggest risk with one of these things because it sounds just perfect like go long and go short and in a year we'll see where we're at <laughs> your, your best friend theta is your biggest risk if it, if it doesn't move at all time decay is your biggest risk Time decay, because I've done it. I've bought uh, calls and puts on the same exact stock, just needing some sort of movement after hour earnings and nothing. Crickets. All right. So, hey, Jason, we got a comment on our Twitch. Would you like me to read it? Go for it. All right. It's from it's from Chris. It says Chris here. Generally, a sh- he says generally a straddle is when you don't know which direction it will go. You know it is going to go a lot. You just there know it's go. going to go a lot. And typically you go, you do a long or short strangle. Basically, it's a straddle where you think it will go a specific way or more. Yeah, I was saying you could do like you don't have to do like at the money. You you could basically do like um like you could do the one hundred five straddle. Yeah, you can definitely adjust that strike price, but to make it simpler and to be honest, the the safest, more sec, most it's secure still, way to it's do still it a is straddle. at the money is at it's the still, money. It's still a straddle. It's still a straddle. This because would be it's like the same a, strike price. That's I feel like what this makes would be this would be like a long straddle, I guess. I don't know. I guess maybe you could answer that. I'm not sure because I've seen those long straddles, short straddles. I haven't really looked into it. I just know that a straddle is a call and a put at the same exact strike on the same exact expiration. Yeah. Okay. So next um, would be the. I would think the next thing I would go into would be a strangle. There you go. That's bam, probably bam, that's your next. Bam, that's your bam, next. Bam, bam. That's your next kind of safest. I would go Strangle with. Oh baby! I play that song. Gonna the burn the town. <laughs> Songs Got my jam. What do you say? Okay, so like the thing about like straddles is they're a bit like expensive. So if I'm gonna do, let's do for example the 100 uh, call and the 100 put on Udow. Total, it comes to six ninety. Um, just keep that number in price. So about seven hundred bucks, right? Yeah. The strangle, you spread the uh, you spread the, uh, the the strike prices. But you so keep the same expiration. You keep, you keep the same expiration date. I'm keeping it on September twenty first. So let's say it's I'm doing UDAO. That's a triple leverage fund. That motherfucker's gonna fly one way or another. I don't care. The UDAO, they're they're big motherfucking players. It's a triple leverage. You Dow motherfucking Jones. The Dow fucking so Jones. What is what is ten dollars on a hundred dollars? Is that ten percent? Yeah. September twenty first. How many days is September twenty first from now? Uh, today's the twenty third. Just call it twenty eight days. <laughs> you can't do that. She can't do math. Twenty eight days. So that's like a month away. It's ten percent, and so that's got to be divided by three. So that's round up nine point six. So that's almost like three percent in one month. Can the Dow Jones three percent either way? That's what I'm. That's what I. That's what I usually look like when in a, in a normal straddle or straddle. Can you use? 
and you kind of bring in that good old statistics standard deviation kind of thing. You got your at the money, you buy, so you would buy the call for above the strike price, 3%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I do 10% for you now. That's just a general 10 bucks right now. It's 10 10 on the monthly? 10 on the month. I do $10 above the strike price right now, and for the put, I'll do $10 below the strike price right now. So ninety dollars. So what? Um, oh, so much cheaper. I forgot oh, what I was wow. going to ask. Come on, Thomas. man! You can ask questions. I know, man. I know. So, so okay, go. I do when I'm looking at you, Dow. The way I do it is ten dollars. That's just a nice strangle for me. That's a that's ten that's ten percent both ways on the on the stock. And that's what can, works for Nathan, and Nathan that's, likes it. That's what that's what I like. And a strangle is much cheaper. So how much was the straddle? Oh, that's what I was going to ask. There, bring it. You're a genius. How much was? Yeah, the I was going to say uh, it was a roughly seven hundred. Seven hundred dollars. The cost for the ten percent on both sides, on both legs. They call them legs. Um, see, okay. And it also says strangle for those viewing live in the video later. Um, the call leg and the put leg are much cheaper than the strangle call leg and the and the strangle, a straddle put leg. Did I say that right? The strangle legs are cheaper than the straddle legs. And it's $150 for the cost of the strangle total. So it's literally 75% cheaper. Uh, 50% cheaper. Now, now what you, is that? It, wow, like 65% cheaper. It comes with more risk. But, I mean, like, you're putting less up. Like, it's going to move You're making a way. smaller bet, and you're going to make... Probably the same amount of money. Yeah, the thing is with like straddles, is if you're going to deplete one, if theoretically if you're going to deplete one of the options, it's got to it's got to go. It's got to get up and go. It, like if it goes up and then comes back down, then you got to talk about time decay. Time decay has 100% taken effect. You'll notice like when it comes back to its price that you bought your option at, it'll be the option will be at a lower value. I've seen it before. I don't like it. So that's like, I've, that's, uh, I've gotten risk, burned on a lot of strangles, to yeah, be completely honest. I strangled a lot really? after earnings. Dude, Disney fucked me like at least seven times. So this the strangle, the, the risk is involved if the price stays in between those two, that, the 10% or that 20% range between $90 and $110. If it stays in between there, it kind of just fucks. Yeah, you'll just lose your money on time decay. But to be honest, Nathan, you probably had another investment that pulled four hundred bucks somewhere else. So you count that one as a loss, because because what didn't move here moved elsewhere. If you have your portfolio properly, correct. Sure. (laughs) And that's the beauty of these things. I like I like how you can just put time in your favor with these as well. You can say, hey, I just want this price, and I want it in a year, and you just got time in your favor. And we know that markets change somewhat drastically over the course of a year. I mean, look at the volatility we've had. Look where we're at compared to last year. Look where 2017 was to 2014. So do you believe in going long on strangles or straddles, I mean? Of course. Would you go like, would you go like two years, you down and, years? And, just, and just hold it? That's like an expensive contract, if I'm going to be completely honest. And if I'm doing, yeah, it's going to be ridiculous. But like, if you say, "Hey, I'm leveraging my retirement right now," and I'm just doing it, and you said, "Hey, I got, I got six grand to put in it," can you pull that up real quick? And at the money straddle. <laughs> yeah, for you to. It's got to be close to like ten thousand. It'll be ex- nah, it won't be that bit expensive, but it'll be expensive. Uh, twenty two hundred bucks. I feel like that's not much. I feel like that's a cheap fucking bet, dude. On you, Dow? This is this is for this is for uh, March fifteenth, two thousand nineteen. I don't think I can go any further. Oh, that's right. That's why I've never done it, Nathan. Because I remember now, those triple averages don't go past like four, three months. They don't go past past, or I mean, like three quarters. That's why. There, yeah, yep. That reminds it. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's it right there. There you go. Now, 
Now, humor me. Just say you don't leverage it. Just say, give me the Dow at this price in two years. Because I think they go out to April of 2020. So you just want the Dow, DIA? Yeah, so just do the regular Dow. Oh, I got to get there. The boring Dow. DIA. Take a simple DIA. So you want. Oh, God. Hold on. Oh shit, look at that options change. Option chain. Alright, do you want January twenty twenty? Go for it. At the money straddle? Yeah. Okay, so it's trading at twenty five two hundred I'm sorry, I was doing the actual price. Two hundred and fifty six dollars and sixty eight cents. We'll do one call at the money, which is two sixty. Oh, that's right above the money, I should say. And then we'll do one put, which is at the money. That's also not bad. That's also not a bad like, idea. I mean, I, I, I kind of wanted to get your thoughts on long options and long spread options. Here we go, here we go. 3500 That's 3500 That's a $3,500 investment. That's ridiculous. But I mean, give me the Dow at this price in two years, and you can either accumulate the Dow and buy DIA and keep that in your portfolio. You want to know what a good strangle is? Good strangle. What price? would you What would you go for on a strangle? Okay, I would so get the at years? the money put. Two years? Yeah, I would fucking <laughs> the put go at, at the, the money. money put, and then get go long as shit. I go like 280. <laughs> Dow 285. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, uh, I like that as a strangle because they're two vastly different strike prices. If you're but doing it goes an, to show how you can just really put these things in your fucking favor. If you're doing an at the money put, it's going to cost you like 1600 bucks. What about the at the money put with the 285 call? Okay, so you want hold on. So you want the two eighty five call, right? Yeah. We got I want one more I wanna discuss one more strategy. Okay. I don't really have much more to deliver. I know that – I've read a lot. I've want, researched a lot, but I can't retain the fucking ridiculous spreads that are there, like the iron condors and – You want to um, – yeah, that's, that's the next one I'm going to go over. I'm going to go like the, the idea. I don't know if there's an actual like percentage that you do. So, uh, so this is for the 285 call and – and no, you what's want, this for? You right want now? at the money put? It's the, it's like a it's a long strangle, I guess. Yeah, at the money put, two eighty five call Dow. Can we buy this in a simulator right now? I'm we should have a RTG simulator. Yeah, we should. Or someone should do it and email us at rebel trading group at gmail dot com. Rebel trading group with two G's at gmail dot com. What if it just stuck around? Out. What if it just stuck around for two years around two Just fucking just <laughs> new. But okay, uh, like I know, like okay, when you look at that order sheet, that's the only time that thought goes through your head because every time before you're about to click that, you're gonna say, "Dude, there's no fucking way, there's no fucking way," and then you put in the order and you're like, "Oh shit, that's this is real now." What if it just doesn't move? I always feel that, like I always feel that like bit of uh, before I pull the trigger on these crazy ass ideas like this. Okay, so the last strategy you want to kind of go over. It's 2200 by the way. Ugh. Yeah. I'm about it. You long... Uh, we'll talk about or you that. Can, or you can buy 10 shares. <laughs> Cuck. I feel like it's so much more return potential. It's literally 10% of the price you get. Just, so, like, okay, on Invest Talk, they said that they don't like that idea because you risk the potential of losing it all. Well, don't be an asshole and hold on to it until expiration. No. 
You don't have to hold it till expiration. If you get a, one of those Jason Besting violent moves, you call it volatility. I call it violence. Put that on a shirt. We're going to sell it. Available to you. Rebel Trading Group. Um, Rebel Trading Group. Com. <laughs> you, if you get these rapid movements up, lock it in and walk away, bro. If you get tenfold and you've only hold it for three, four months, run, dude. Are you kidding me? Especially when you're taking big stakes and shit like that. Like, now you can, you can just choose to ride it out. There's a lot of people that do that. Put it all in oil, triple leverage it. Call me in two years. I like you don't it. have to hold till expiration. You never have to hold, and it's never a bad idea to lock in a profit. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do something really complex. All right, so hang on, everybody. Just if you're not, if you're already lost, you might as well just exit now because this is just going to fucking blow your goddamn mind. All right, so we're going to do what's called an iron condor. All right, it's very complicated. It involves selling options and buying options at the same time, and you can do it in the same order. All right. So the idea is to sell. What is it? And near the money. Um, a near the money call and a near the money put, and then buy an out of the money call and buy an out of the money put. So if it moves either direction, well, a you're locking in profits from selling the put and the call, correct? So you're straddling two separate prices. Are you straddling it? I don't think you're straddling. No, you're not straddling because you're selling one. Yeah, so here, let me set it up. Uh, let me go to the share price. So you're going to sell a call, and you're going to sell a put. And you're going to buy. Price? I'm doing at the money. Okay. Is this what is typically recommended for an iron condor? I guess. I don't know if there's like a distance you should buy it. I'm just going to do uh, I'm gonna do 105 and then 95 for the call. Or for the put. Shit. So I'm buying the 95 put. And now I'm going to buy the 105 call correct it's fucking ridiculous I'm just I'm just trying to think how the fuck does this thing move I've said like, that this before. is like go from the buggy whip to the to, Tesla uh, yeah I know it's really <laughs> fucking complicated I think you might have to do something like this, maybe. There she is. Okay, so you buy one, you sell one right above the money, or right out of the money. So it's right near the money. I think it's called near the money. One, You sell one near the money call, and you sell one near the money put, and you buy one out of the money call. And one out of the money put. And what's your objective here? So what are you really looking for? I don't know if like this is like really like how it's actually coming out to be. This is Iron Condor. Yeah, like I don't know if you have to like do you have you when you buy when you sell you have to have collateral, right? Not always. Not with level three. There's a lot of times where you can sell you can sell calls against your put and you can sell puts against your call. That's what I'm looking at right here. Yeah, like it's like doing like a little. But they got to be in the money. Yeah. Oh, dude, we gotta fucking we gotta we gotta read up. So this is this is an iron condor. That's how to set it up. We need to do more research. I wonder if so hold on, I gotta look at this real quick. I gotta look at this in silence real quick. I'm selling the selling the call and the put. Sell call, buy call, strike price, sell put, sell call. Last one should be sell put. <laughs> yeah. So you're you're doing the deep in the monies? No wait. No, well they can be deep in the money, but I just did them kind of out of the money. This is, I don't, I just don't get what you're looking for here. Are you looking for just movement? 
Okay, so when you say like, you're, you're getting the premiums, right? So you're collecting. I guess yeah, you're looking for just kind of some kind of movement. You have those like it collateral and shells. It continues making you buy the shit. I mean, if you're selling a call and selling a put at the same time, don't they kind of like like at expiration? Don't they kind of like cancel themselves out? If you sold a call and sold a put, yeah. Well, you would have to buy the call. You'd have, have to, to buy the shares back. You're just recycling the system, but collecting two premiums. That's what the f- <laughs> outrageous. <laughs> Do you hear what you just said? That's <laughs> what it sounds like, right? Yeah. Oh, I'll just keep the hundred shares in rotation. I'll sell them here and buy them buy here. Buy them back. Thanks for the premiums, premiums dude. <laughs> yeah, but what's the what's the risk to that? You're locking away that money. Christopher says, <clears throat> Extraordinaire, you want it to go way up past your call or way down past your put. Yeah, because you bought those, like, insurances, sort of. Like, if it goes, like, way past, like, your, like, it's like holding on to, like, I guess oh, you'd be holding sense. on to the shares and now you're, like, holding on to insurance for, like, up and down. That kind of makes sense. Thank you, Chris. That makes sense. So it's like you want it to go violently one way, and then you got insurance on either one. So what's the maximum you can make and the maximum you can lose here? Because that's the that's one of the things with spreads. There's a maximum and there's a minimum. So I feel like you're kind of like weighing your premiums out on your uh, sales. You know, like how much you're making there. Because two of these will expire out of the money, right? They could. Huh. You're blowing my mind. It's like some alien shit. I guess you like you would want if you were bearish, you would want the uh, call to be in the money. I don't know. Yeah, because you're selling it. We're gonna do some research, and on the next episode, we're gonna have exact answer. Yeah, I think that's a good episode, man. It is a good episode. Are you watching anything in specifically tomorrow? Yeah, dude. I'm watching um, H. Helwit Packer, HPQ. They had earnings today. They beat earnings by 2%. Um, I bought two puts and a call, so we'll see how that goes. It's down 62 cents, 2.52%. So we'll see how that goes tomorrow morning. Interesting. Very interesting. Beating earnings by 2% and down 2.52% after hours. We'll believe it when the institutions get their hands in. Yeah, so. If you're following Rebel Trading Group, we're selling puts. We're buy- I'm sorry, we're buying puts on HPQ right now. What else are you doing? Um, I am watching. Oh, God. I, okay, I was going to say gold just because she keeps moving, but I used it, I think, the last couple times, so I'm going to ignore it. Even though I do want to bring up there was a little gold sell off and use that opportunity. <clears throat> I saw it, dude. I'm, I'm ready looking, to buy some. I'm ready to sell if some. If you are interested in selling a covered call right now, <laughs> I would sell PLUG just to dip my toes in the water and get into it. Sell an at-the-money call on plug because I think it's going to go down. So I'm taking a bearish position on plug. I think you should lock it and collect that premium and on the way down start selling calls on it. A good way to get interested, uh, get into covered calls on a cheap stock. Um, Got upgraded by Oppenheimer today, so that's why she popped up. Um, She got upgraded to overweight because it will uh, overperform the market quote unquote so whatever i am uh taking a bearish position on that in the short term probably end of week definitely end of next week for sure so that's plug power they are just the tesla of renewable energy but they still got like a 2.8 billion dollar bark market cap so i'll take it he'll take it i'll take it you can, Where can sell they you can sell oh, the uh, 250 call for 16 bucks for next year, March 15th. So that gives you like a forty dollar price, forty five dollar price appreciation on top of 16. So that's um, a fifty one per fifty one dollar on your two hundred dollar investment. So that's like a twenty five percent return if it goes up. If it goes up, if not, you're guaranteed 16, 16 on your 200. 
So that's eight percent in Mar- until March. Decent, decent. One percent a month, man. That's all I need. <laughs> I'd like to do that a week, man. One percent a week. Fuck, we that's my goal. We were trying. I just don't have the capital. That's my problem. Like I can do it. I just need some capital. Yeah. All right. Well, let's wrap it up. Where can they at me? At you. you. We are at us. live on twitch.tv. Right this second. Backslash or slash rebel trading group. You can find our history and archives of our previous podcast at youtube.com slash rebel trading group. We're on Facebook slash Rebel Trading Group, SoundCloud, our past four or, or our recent four recent episodes on SoundCloud slash Rebel Trading Group. Email us any questions, concerns, comments, corrections for next week's episodes. Email us at Rebel Trading Group at gmail.com. Email us at Rebel Trading Group dot com. That's Rebel Trading Group. With two G's at gmail.com. We look at our email daily. If you want to email us questions, you get all our, or our corrections, or or what we're doing wrong. We love to learn, so email us. That's where we best respond, right? Or on Facebook too, as well. So you comment on our videos. Check us out. Check us out live. I'll try to do more of like an update of like when we're coming out. Like if we're gonna go live one day, I'll like do like a early morning say, hey Facebook, we're going live at like 4 p.m. I'll do something like that next time, but yeah. All right, man. Are we casting tomorrow? I would like to, to be honest, because I'm going out of town. I'd like to wrap up uh, number four. It's going to be a subjective episode because we're going to talk about some of our favorite strategies and the things we like to employ. To be honest, I held back a lot today because I'm going to talk about some of my favorite strategies and why some of your strategies aren't mine and vice versa. Do you have more gonna be option fun. strategies? Not really. I, re- I really don't because I've looked into all the you know vertical spreads and bear put spreads and bear call spreads. And I, to be honest, I have trouble retaining it, but I also haven't fully invested myself into it because it's still not something I'm completely comfortable with. When I get a larger account, it'll be something that I will be comfortable with. But at the time, I just I feel like I want to slowly build it up of the next few months until I get into that and I have trouble retaining it because it's a lot to balance off the top of your head and because there's so many variations of what you can and can't do and I like it I like it yeah so alright man well well I'm gonna catch you tomorrow right yeah we'll see you guys tomorrow about the same time catch us then on the Twitch yeah just after 4 All right, we'll see you tomorrow. All right.